Good morning, good day, and a warm welcome to our event, What to Expect from Business Applications in 2022. Thank you for taking the time, and we are sure you will not regret to spend the next approximately one hour, 15 minutes with us. Let me introduce myself. My name is Ursula Koller, and I'm the Corporate Marketing Lead at UBS Group, and today your host. We will start with a talk show led by our showmaster and region lead for the UK and North America, Will McKinty, where we explore the questions, what do you expect from Business Central, F&O, and Power Platform in 2022? What do businesses need to be prepared for? And what do you expect for the channel? We were able to win high-ranking speakers from Microsoft for this panel discussion. For time zone reasons, these talks were pre-recorded. Our internal experts, Eric K., William van Forthuizen, Agne Bellaniene, and Chris Barks are then going into the live discussion with Will. After the talk show, we have Michael Hartman, CEO of QBS Group, answering the question mark of what the new brand and name of the joint forces of One Click Factory and QBS will look like. And then after this big moment, our CEO, Louis Brüstenhofen, will share the mission and vision of our newly formed company and what's in for you as a partner. If you have comments or questions, please raise them in the Q&A section. We will answer them right in the chat or answer them in our Q&A session after the presentations. But now, enjoy. And with that, I hand over to you, Will. So thanks, Ursula. Let's jump right into today's conversation. Uh, so we've got, a, we've got a number of guests from both Microsoft, QBS, and One Click Factory. From Microsoft joining us today, we've got Charles Marner, Corporate Vice President of Business Applications and Platform. We have Toby Bowers, General Manager, Product Marketing uh, for Dynamics 365 and it, the Industry Solutions for Microsoft. And we have the Mike Morton, the General Manager for Business Central. Now, due to time zone uh, ch challenges, uh, we pre-recorded uh, uh, all of the Microsoft interviews and statements. From the QBS and One Click Factory side, today we have Eric, our Vice President of Sales and, and Partner Engagement. We have uh, Agna, our Business Line Manager for FNO. We have Christmas, Chris Parks, not Christmas Parks. We have Chris Parks, our Business Development Manager for all things Dataverse and Power Platform related. And we have the one and only William Van Fortausen, uh, our, te our Technical Services Lead, and all round Business Central enthusiasts. So I just want to say to everybody on today's call, thanks for joining us. Uh, and let's get started with the statement of Mike Morton. Uh, having our, our partners in our ecosystem scale is just the, the number one uh, thing for growth. I mean, we recognize that partners are the lifeblood and the heart of our business, and we want our partners to be uh, as efficient, as capable, as knowledgeable as possible. Uh, we've had you know such great experiences in the past with 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 QBS, such great experiences with OneClick, um, and we're confident that that combination is really going to uh, you know sort of enable that large ecosystem to just you know bring on more customers, do a better job, higher, have higher satisfaction. Uh, you know, be a, a great relationship with Microsoft. So we think it's just a win-win-win for everyone. Yeah, you know, I, I think the partners will be able to get, you know, even more value out of the relationship. You know, the, the, there's a broad range of value from, you know, expertise to training, uh, to liaisoning with Microsoft, to, um, you know, actually helping out with some of the mechanics and the transaction support, et cetera, uh, migration. You know, the, the list kind of keeps going on and on. And I just think that the combined entity is just going to really, um, you know, uh, you and I have conversations from time to time. And typically when we do, the questions I get are really, really hard <laughs> um, because uh, QBS and, and OneClick are just such experts on the product um, that, uh, you know, you, the, the knowledge you have is just really going to make your partner community shine. I'm going to try to provide a pretty sort of clear answer. I, I think in uh, in the past, you know, we have a lot of, of of applications in our business apps, and we've had a lot of discussion about, you know, how does Business Central relate with, you know, finance, supply chain, and commerce, and we have all these new things, you know, 
fraud protection and guides and sales and everything else. And, and I think that we're uh, we're going to try to really be clear with our strategy. And we're going to say, hey, we have our our products for uh, the enterprise. And, and when I say enterprise and, and top on managed, you know, I, I don't necessarily mean that there's this sort of different definition. And you know, people are going to be familiar with those products. You know, sales, finance, supply chain, et cetera. Um, and then we're going to say, hey, we're going to have our offerings for for the S and B space. And and to be really crisp, that's going to be business central is is going to be the hero. Um, sales is, is and when I say sales, let me be crisp. I mean sales with customer service and field service. So sales, customer service, and field service. Those customer engagement offerings um, and the power platform. And we're going to say, hey, that combination is going to be Microsoft's. Um, S and B play and business apps. Now, of course, that's complemented by Office and Teams and, and you know other other sort of things. But in sort of the business app space, um, and and be sort of really crisp. But that's our our play there, um, and, and try not to confuse you know the S and B market too much with some of the other products that are not applicable to them, um, and vice versa. Not try to confuse the enterprise markets. Um, now, of course, you know, you're always going to have departments and in, in large enterprises that will run something like Business Central, and yeah. you know you might have. You know, some very sophisticated small businesses that might use some of those other products, but but you know the the primary uh, messaging is going to be what I said. We continue to invest hard in performance, um, scalability, security, compliance, and uh, you know that that just remains absolutely you know top of top of mind for us, and that's you know not just out of the box performance and making sure that partners have the tools they need to write performant code, the telemetry that they need. Um, when I say scalability, I mean both directions. So that way you can have, you know, lar very large customers running on Business Central. Uh, we can also have lots of small customers and running that in an efficient way and, and being implemented. So that, you know, th th that's going to remain number one on my list. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, and, you know, I'll, I'll um, I'll call this partner enablement, but this is really, you know, a whole bunch of things uh, in the space. And that, that's everything from uh, capabilities around administration uh, to having, you know, missing, uh, you know, events and things that people need to sort of build their solutions, uh, having the right licensing and solutions that we need in, in that particular space, uh, having uh, the... Uh, you know, just just the the top sort of asks that we get from our partner community. You know, we, we get <laughs> quite a few. Um, and and when I when we talk about sort of growing partners, uh, you know, I'll talk about growing the, the partner ecosystem in, in in two ways. There, one is you know more partners. Um, so how do we bring on you know more people? You know, how do we make it easier for uh, for people to actually be business central partners and and implement you know with high quality? Yeah. Um, and then how do we have the partners that we have, you know, scale, and how do we have them do more customers, bigger customers, you know, increase their business, um, and you know, obviously, you know, if you're an existing group, that the latter is going to be what's more interesting. But that, um, you know, really, our, our our goal is to sort of grow the overall pie, um, and frankly, you know, we think that the overall pie is enormous. Um, you know, Business Central is still a pretty small fraction of, of what's possible in sort of the S and B space. And then, and then, sort of the the third, I'll say, is is a much more customer centric uh, part, which is you know a real focus around uh, usability and and sort of the quality of experience for the actual end customer. And so we're going to invest in um, you know the making things easier, making things smoother, more discoverable. And you know this is everything from just you know small improvements to posting an invoice or finding our navigation. You know, to things like search or find configurations, the role sensor. Uh, you know, the and and that's a a real passion of mine. I think that uh, you know we shouldn't just sort of accept that you know people need to be trained on on our business applications. Of course, they need to be training, and many of you probably great training. Um, but we want to have this stuff be as you know easy uh, to, to use and discover and learn as possible. Okay, a couple of technical issues there. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me again now. So, so we've just heard there from uh, Mike Morton, and uh, he's a great supporter of uh, of the QBS and One Click Factory community. So now I'd like to bring on stage uh, our very own Eric. Eric's recently joined us and started as the the VP for Sales and Channel Engagement. So, Eric, what's your point of view and, and perspective on what Mike's just said there about why partners should be so excited about the future? Uh, and the Microsoft SMB strategy. And and also, what should our channel be expecting for 2022? Well, uh, hi, Will. Uh, good to see a better picture of you. I think we heard some yeah. <laughs> different statements uh, from Mike around PC and the Microsoft strategy. Microsoft is investing heavily <clears throat> in making PC 
with the Power Platform, the best SMB solution for customers. This includes continuing making enterprise capabilities available for SMB customers. And I really think that that means for the channel that they in 2022 can feel confident that BC is the right solution now and in the future to solve SMB customer needs. There's yeah. no risk in Microsoft growing BC into mid-market or enterprise customers. In other words, partners who love the SMB market can safely continue to invest in BC and power, pl power platform knowledge and capabilities. Mm -hmm. Back to you, Will. Thanks, Ray. Uh, great insight. So, so now I'd like to bring onto the virtual stage our very own William Van Forthausen. And uh, so William you know, is the most, one of the most passionate people on the planet I know about all things Business Central. So, so we've just spoken with Mike there, uh, William. And as Mike also mentioned where Business Central is moving uh, for today and, and the future. What are you expecting to see personally for, for Business Central in, in 2022? Thanks, Will. Yeah, Mike Mayerton clearly shared the vision and direction of Business Central going forward with key investments like performance, eh? not only enhancing the performance of code, but also give the partners more information in telemetry. And yeah. a third very important point, enhancing the scalability of the BC platform to handle large customers. Another very important uh, point I'd like to mention is the partner enablement. Eh? More capabilities around the central administration of your end customers, such as assigning default permission sets when users are signing up, or more detailed error mm -hmm. messages. And a third point is the usability of BC, which is also beneficial for our end customers, I would say. Uh, the quality of the cool. user experience, easier to use, smoother, more discoverable, easy navigation, etc. With some examples like uh, the addition of more guided tools, context-aware links in the helping, both from Microsoft as well as from the ISV solutions. So to summarize, Business Central in 2022 and going forward will be a great product, a well-performing and secure platform. And all of this will be made easier for the partner. And personally, I hope that with that, we can basically conclude that both the platform as well as the Business Central application are now on such a mature level that we can basically dream of the next topics like really new additions of major features in the areas of wholesale yeah, manufacturing cool. instead of only small general additions, you know? Um, more default integrations like e-invoicing, banking connections, etc. Mm -hmm. And the last point I would dream of is the default implementation of Azure AI Builder in business scenarios like uh, yeah. automate your expense reports huh, with receipt uh, processing or save every type of document if it's bill of loading, contracts, invoices, shipment documents, or automatically into BC with form processing, for example. So some things to dream of. Back to you, Will. Yeah, big, big dreams. And uh, thanks, th thanks for that, William. And look, I, I don't think they're dreams. I think this stuff is all going to become reality in, in, the, in the not too distant future. So let's stick with the theme of, of, of ERP. And, and uh, I, I, I'd love to hear from, from you, Agna. And uh, I'd love to hear from you about your your expectations in 2022. Uh, so, Agna. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to see such a wide audience that is already communicating in the chat. And let's move a little bit in the area of enterprise um, at the moment. So if we're talking about these 365 finance and operations, uh, we were experiencing a tremendous growth in the past three years already. So after, and what Microsoft did, so after moving framework to cloud first, then successfully adapting extensions and stabilizing the system and moving everything into agile mindset for everyone, Microsoft is keeping its promises and releasing new functionalities now every six weeks to cover as many business needs as possible. And at the moment, there are no signs it will stop anytime soon. So the platform continues to grow in empowering enterprises, first of all, to manage business centrally and delivering functionalities to make automated processes easier, such as mm. vendor invoice automation or automatic banking reconciliation. Besides, the investments will continue in new release functionalities, like, for instance, asset leasing in order to integrate it in a, uh, the new model better into the old framework that we already have. The same as in supply chain, the system will continue to improve in warehouse management, master planning, production control mm -hmm. areas, together with artificial intel intelligence power. And there's just a few samples that I named. 
So uh, if on the top, we would add an integrated power apps like V365 projects, operations, commerce, and human resources, and the other finance and operations would become a solid enterprise solutions, touching each area of enterprise business that Microsoft is proud to conquer the world with. So in the past years, following the tremendous product functionality, scale, and adaptability, District 65 new projects grow worldwide with an impressive scale and, and numbers, and there is no sign that it will stop anytime soon. So I would say it's a challenging and very exciting place for every District 65 professional at the moment. Back to you, Will. That's, uh, that's, that's super insight. And, and uh, you know, we, we... We are seeing the number of FNO partners grow uh, as, as, as much as the business central partners. So that's fantastic uh, and, and great insight. Now, we've just talked about the world of ERP from, uh, from the world of dynamics. So we haven't talked about the world of power platform, the world of dataverse. So um, before we have a conversation with our very own Chris Parks, um, I had the opportunity to have a conversation with Charles Lamana last week. Uh, and uh, Charles uh, has recorded a session for us to uh, to have a look at. So, Charles, or let's bring you on virtually. The first thing I would say is like the the core mission in my mind for Dynamics and Power Platform is we're going to help every organization and everyone participate in digital transformation. And we do that by creating power platform for low code, no code tools, which makes it so anybody can build an app, anybody can do automation, anybody can understand data. And we do it with Dynamics 365. So any company can have ready-made applications to digitally transform how they do financials, how they do customer service, how they do sales, how they do supply chain orchestration, and so on. And through those two things, we can make it so it's not just tech companies that digitally mm -hmm. transform and have digital business models, but instead every single company in every industry in automotive and manufacturing and retail, uh, in energy, you name it, we wanna make it so every company can actually be part of this journey. And the reason we think the combo works so well together is because we have apps off the shelf to get mm -hmm. the job done really quickly um, and we have a platform which makes it really easy to go customize and extend it. And if you take, say, Business Central as a really great all-in-one ERP yeah. capability, uh, it does a whole lot, but there's always things around the edges which we don't do inside the application. And that's where Power Platform is a great combo. I would say the, the biggest thing I would do would be focus on the intersection between Power Apps and Power Automate around application experiences and backing automation. And I would do it in a way where I can find some reusable components specific to either functions or industries and you know sell the IP and sell services around it. That's what I would do. And like, and one of the things where I think the NAV community and now the BC community has done so well is exactly that, finding that mm -hmm. niche where there's people that are relatively small, but there's a lot, but they look alike, they have similar needs and servicing them as a group. And it can be highly specialized, like holiday homes and selling chalets or, you know, going and doing air conditioning repair and installation or doing roofing in the West Coast of the US. Like there's all <laughs> kinds of opportunities like that, which aren't just picked up uh, by the big, super huge system integrators yeah. and partners, um, because it's just the model doesn't work for the way they do business. And if we go back to how I answered one of those first questions about what are you trying to do with biz apps at Microsoft, help every company and everyone digitally transform through apps and through low code, no code. There's no better place where people are underserved than the SMB space when it comes to these things. So I, I'm really excited just from a overall mission perspective, what I think we can do using technology and partners. I think it's gonna make a huge difference, but the important detail is gonna be how it makes that difference. In the SMB space, people aren't raising their hand and saying, please build me an AI model, or you know, please write, yeah. uh, go open up a Jupyter notebook and write something in Python. That's just not how they're wired, because I mean that's just not how they do business. Instead, they're gonna have they're gonna have a specific scenario in mind which is best enabled by AI. So it'll be something along the lines that we would like to better automate the way that we do repairs on the system. 
well, that's a great opportunity for maybe computer vision, or we want to go automate the way we handle invoices from uh, the law firms that we service. Maybe that's a great opportunity for forms understanding. Um, so I would say it's going to show up, but it's going to show up in a very non-techy way. It's going to show up yeah. in transforming the the little odds and ends which slow down any business. Um, but AI mm -hmm. is going to actually help make humans more efficient and more productive. So that's kind of how I'll see. It, I imagine it will show up, and that's why. AI builder is built the way it is because I think the same thing is largely true in the enterprise, uh, but they may have more data scientists that are willing to go through mm -hmm. a problem. In SMB space, you, um, you're not going to have a whole lot of PhDs in machine learning and computer vision on staff. So it's like, how do you get the job yeah. done? Partner, you configuring AI builder for my specific process. That's what, the way we think it will actually happen. I would say, if you have not already, go try out Power Platform. And I mean, really try it out. No matter what your background is or what your discipline is, go to one of the Power Platform products. Power Apps or Power Automate would be the two ones I would suggest selfishly. Um, and I would say, just give it a shot. And the reason I say to do that is because what I've learned is when people get more familiar with the technology, your imagination can start to run wild. Once you see how easy it is to start building a solution, particularly if you come from a more technical background, your mind will immediately go to, wow, I could solve these five problems for my customers, or here's 10 new opportunities I could go pursue um, for my customers. And that all starts from just getting your hands a little bit dirty. So if you have not used the Power Platform before, go give it a try. You can just go online, favorite search engine, find the website, sign up and get started in just a couple minutes. So that was Charles, as usual, being incredibly enthusiastic uh, about the domain of uh, uh, power apps and all things uh, Dataverse related. Now, speaking of Dataverse, uh, we've I've got Chris Parks on, on the stage with me. Hi, Chris. Hi, Will. So, so we just heard Charles, you know, being uber enthusiastic a, a, about uh, the future of a power platform, power apps and power automate in particular. Um, what do you think the winning formula is here? Uh, you know, and what would you expect to see from Power Platform in 2022? Uh, yes, a good question, Will. In a word, it's um, it's going to be all about growth. Now, there's something else that Charles told us recently. Uh, he said that the sector seeing the largest compound annual growth rate uh, for Power Platform from Microsoft over the last 12 months was their SMB sector. So more growth uh, primarily. Then also from Microsoft, we can expect continued investment into the capabilities of the platform. And those have been ongoing for the last five years now. This isn't something new. Um, and all of that, of course, then maintained by Microsoft, it brings huge opportunity for business applications. Uh, we'll see that become much more mainstream in 2022. Okay, so that's, so that's, that's great insight. Now, we've talked about Dataverse, we've talked about Power Platform, but you know, I've known you for, for for a very, very long time. You started out in the world of CRM. What's, what should we be thinking when it comes to the C CRM and the CRM apps? Yes, yeah, so Power Platform uh, brings a perfectly aligned opportunity for upsell and expanded consulting opportunities. Um, should a customer outgrow the capabilities that the core platform provides, um, and the core products that were formerly known as CRM or even customer engagements, they continue to go from strength to strength, albeit uh, with an enterprise focus from Microsoft. So mm -hmm. if a customer needs the extensive capabilities that say a part of customer insights, field service, uh, project operations, then great, there's a new extended services opportunity from an existing engagement. Well, that's, uh, well, that's absolutely fantastic to hear. So, um, Thanks, Chris, for, for, for that insight. So um, I'd like now to bring all of our partners up, uh, all of our uh, all of our QBS and One Click Factory team up uh, on, one by one and ask them pretty much the same question now, uh, which is, uh, what do our businesses need uh, to be prepared for in 2022? I'd first like to address that question to yourself, Eric. Yes, I think there's uh, two things uh, first. Partners must continue to invest in understanding all the new technologies which Microsoft is pumping out of the laboratories. This will ensure they will be the best advisor for SMB customers, also in bringing enterprise capabilities to SMB customers. Uh, and second, 
uh, to take advantage of the new solution from Microsoft, customers would benefit mm -hmm. of long-term relationships with a partner who knows them, understand their business, and therefore quickly can advise about the new possibilities. Also due to the Microsoft development strategy, it is expected that the BC projects may be shorter and therefore the partners who can scale will have advantages compared to other partners. Back to you, Will. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, so I'd like to bring Agna up and uh, Agna. Hello again. So Hello. same question to you. Uh, what do you think our partners should be prepared for in 2022? Yes, so coming into enterprise, uh, everything probably is about managing complexity, right? How to make some mm -hmm. kind of complex big project to fly. <laughs> and I have quite a list here, uh, and uh, probably something that comes on from, from our experiences and what we see. So, um, first of all, uh, and we and the partners, we have to accept that the customer has a primary role in running and owning the project together with the mm -hmm. internal team of the business process owners and solution architects. Then another yeah. thing, uh, we have to accept that the project will require a big team with a highly experienced and professionals and project managers that have a wide business knowledge and are able to navigate in their multi-partner and multicultural environments. Also, the partners will have to decide to build their own or to buy external IP, also incorporating mature ISVs in the project that, of course, it will add additional complexity, but the same beauty into the project. Then um, partners have to make sure that the customer account managers is involved all the way during the project and delivery cycle by continually working on a strategic platform development and making customer take on the right decisions while going forward. Uh, also, uh, the experts that are working on the projects are supposed to be with a good communication skills who are always ready to go a little bit of an extra mile uh, mm -hmm. for the customer and also in daily basis invest a little bit into continuous learning. So just to summarize, we have to adapt to a fast changing platform while the world is also changing in parallel for us. Back to you, Will. Great. So. I'm hearing adapt, adapt, adapt quickly. Fantastic. Thanks for that insight, Agna. So uh, I'd also like to bring William up to ask the same question about, uh, about what our BC partners should be doing to take advantage of the opportunities in 2022. William. Yeah. Um, Microsoft is now delivering a mature platform and a very good version of Business Central nowadays, I would say. So now it's up to the partners yeah. which should Consider if you want to stay the small fish in the big pond, right? Are you able to make impact? Think about your niche or think about joining forces, for example. Just like the example we saw yesterday with Continue and Open mm -hmm. Plus joining forces. Mm -hmm. Invest in yeah. a marketing engine or decide on build or buy IP. Productize your services. Invest in simple and fast onboarding, just like Microsoft is doing. Mm -hmm. Start thinking Azure. Get creative uh, in terms of resources, eh? the issue we all have in the community. And the last one, yeah. anticipate crisis and adapt to a changing world. Look at your own organization and then study the Griner growth model. So start Googling the Griner growth model. I would say that's the homework for our partners. Back to you, Will. Fantastic. And thanks for educating all of us about the Griner, Griner growth model. Uh, so, uh, and finally, I'd like to bring up Chris. Uh, so Chris, how should our partners be feeling about the future for, for around Power Platform Dataverse in 2022 and, and, and how should they prepare? Yeah, it's quite simple to answer it really. Well, the partners are in for an exciting future. Yeah. Um, from a, a technology adoption standpoint, if we think about the associated bell curve, we know we're beyond the innovators now. Uh, the early adopters that we've seen, they're starting to become the early majority. And that's where the, the opportunity becomes real for mass market adoption. So in order to ensure our partners uh, can capitalize on this opportunity, maybe make it like Christmas every day, then if they, aren't, yeah, that, if they aren't there yet with the Power Platform, as of right now, they really need to be ready to start. Okay, once again, valuable insights. Thanks very much, Chris. So changing gears a little bit, let's, let's, let's think about strategy. Let's think about the mic, and let's talk specifically about the micro strategy and the strategy that that should, should create for, for all of our wonderful partners. 
Um, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, Toby Bowers a um, uh, day before yesterday. So this is hot off the press um, about the Microsoft uh, SMB uh, business application strategy. So let's roll, roll VT. say and i've been at microsoft a long long time in fact more than more than 20 years and you know a lot has changed in this company over the the years that i've been here but one thing that just really hasn't changed is that we have always been and we always will be a very partner centric company and you know i talk to partners all the time and i always try to ground ourselves in the opportunity and frankly in this particular segment in this space we have so much opportunity to go after as as you well know the the business applications market alone is more than 175 billion dollar addressable market and so we're obviously just scratching the the surface on that um but to your point that 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 opportunity has been steadily growing as our portfolio grows. So we've sort of gone beyond the core categories like CRM and ERP yeah. into these new, more expansive areas, customer data platform, low code, no code with power apps, um, you know, automation, just to, to name a few. So as we enter these new markets, our existing business continues to grow. And so we need to make sure we have the partner capacity to support that accelerated growth. So my team, especially in turn, invests in that partner ecosystem to, to fuel that growth. Um, one, one thing I'd say was longer term, one of the areas we're very focused on is enabling partners to build practices across the entirety of the Microsoft cloud, as we call Interesting. it. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So even going beyond core dynamics and, and power platform and into Azure and, and Teams and security and Microsoft 365. Um, you know, those are a big focus area for us for us going forward. But, you know, one of the things I learned very quickly when I joined the BizApps team here at Microsoft is just how critical the partner ecosystem is to our success. And frankly, I just never see that changing. Well, it's such a such an important role, frankly. And I've 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 known you and the team for for several years and seen the business grow and and the partnership grow. But just such a huge opportunity, frankly, for us here at Microsoft. Um, and it's really what we were just speaking about, Will, you know, to help us make connections across that Microsoft ecosystem to just leverage each other's strengths. I think historically, QBS and OneClick Factory have just been such strategic partners for us, both to grow the business and build new capacity in these new areas that, that we talked about. And so I'm really excited about working with you and the team to really take that to the next level in this, in this year ahead. I think on building a practice practice that leverages the full Microsoft Cloud portfolio, building services solutions that are really gold at meeting um, customers' demand. Obviously, in this new world we're living in, I think you know even though things are starting to stabilize and, and normalize a bit, you know this hybrid work is here to stay and frankly, customer demands have shifted. And, you know, there's also no set roadmap for, for what's ahead. I think we've all learned that uh, pretty clearly in the last couple of years. But, you know, really what we're seeing now in this new world is just proliferation of data, um, you know, generated by all of these new business processes. Every device is, is putting out data. Every individual is putting out data. And so for an organization to be successful, they need to sort of move beyond what was business as usual into this new this new normal. Yeah. Um, and what I see is companies who are using that business data to stay competitive, companies that are enabling their people to collaborate, you know, no matter where they are around the world, using the tools they like to use every day. And so I would frankly build a practice that brings together Dynamics 365 with Teams and Microsoft 365 in you know, what we're more and more calling these collaborative application scenarios. Mm -hmm. You know, we made some announcements back in the fall around new capabilities, things like Context IQ that really bring together there are collaborative apps like Teams and, and Microsoft 365 with Dynamics and Power Platform. And so I'd focus there, you know, building IP and services around our industry clouds is another opportunity that, that I think we're excited about. Um, or even just right back to where we started, well, you know, just helping customers who are ready to move their ERP systems to the cloud with the right migration strategies and the right support and enablement to great products like Business Central. Um, so there's no shortage of opportunities across the market, Will, but those are maybe a few areas I'd, I'd think about first. So we just heard from uh, Toby Bowser. 
so Toby uh, gave some great insight in terms of uh, the Microsoft strategy and, and what he believes are the opportunities there for partners. So I'd like to bring Eric back up on stage uh, quickly. So, Hello. hey, Eric. Hi. Uh, so uh, put yourself in the partner's shoes, right? And this is what we love to do at QBS and One Click Factory, is putting yourself in the partner's shoes. Um, what recommendations would you would you implement within in 2022? And how can we, as as a joined up company of One Click Factory and QBS, help our partners succeed? Well, I think we can support our partners in uh, in three ways. Uh, first understanding Microsoft technology as we have done in the past with our academy, uh, which is even stronger now after our merger with Platan and the BC Booster platform. <clears throat> and two, uh, we can help partners grow and scale through our ready to start, ready to grow and take the lead programs. And that means that whatever size you have, we have programs to help you scale. And we are working very uh, close with Microsoft on this. We are actually just entering a new initiative with the focus of scaling up partners where partners are trained jointly by Microsoft and us. Um, and third, uh, with the one click factory service on board, we can now further support partners scaling up by outsourcing their basic BC services, such as our mm -hmm. upgrading on prem on to cloud or support with extra development resources. And notice since we only deliver those services to partners, we will never be a competitor. And we have made tools to eliminate manual work. And this means that we can do this quickly and therefore most likely to a lower price than our partners. And this gap partners can charge to our customers. Back to you, Will. Th thanks, Eric. And, and, you, and you may have broken up a little bit there, but so to summarize, number one, we can help with the academy, getting partners up to speed. Number two, we can help build capacity with the, the ready to start programs. And number three, we've obviously got our, our technical services capability to help partners with their own capacity challenges. So thank you very much indeed, Eric. So I've, I've really enjoyed the conversation with, with, uh, with the team, with the Microsoft guys. Uh, and now uh, I take great pleasure in handing back to, to Ursula. So Ursula. Thanks a lot, Will. Amazing discussion. Uh, also amazing how many people from different uh, uh, countries and locations are joining us today. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions, please don't be shy to raise them in the Q&A chat box. So now that we have heard so much what to be expected in 2022. Now, drums rolling, what will QBS Group and One Click Factory look like in 2022? group to tell us more about the brand story. Thanks, Ursula. And um, I hope um, everyone can hear me right. Um, so let me share my screen for a second. So I hope you can see my screen. Ursula, can you let me know? Not yet. Okay, just a second. Here we go. You should see it now. It's loading. Yes, it's here. Okay, perfect. So actually, um, this is not just about um, a brand name. Um, it's not just about the logo um, for us, uh, for the one click factory employees for the QBS team, but now also for the Platan team, this should become our new home. And hopefully, and uh, even more importantly, this also becomes the new home for our partner community. And so what we did was not just, you know, get together um, with some marketing people, have um, some drinks and then come up with a, you know, creative name. But it was really a process uh, that we went through. So what we did was we started with a management team that uh, discussed the mission and vision and values um, later in the summer last year. 
But then we also did a survey of all of our employees at One Click Factory and at QBS to get their feedback, what the core values are that they see and what they would like to see in the new brand. After summer, we got together with uh, representatives of both companies and all roles that we have in our new company to discuss that and um, to distill sort of what are the real brand values that we want to see and how do we prioritize and differentiate this new brand. Then we had workshops with partners because of course we also want, wanted to get the feedback from our partners. So we had uh, partners from across all of our regions, different sizes, uh, different focus areas like you know, uh, Business Central, but also FNO and Power Platform and uh, uh, Sales and Services. And they gave us feedback what we already had and what they would, would like to see in our new brand. And that created the brand values that we want to transport with our new brand. And then we came up with a brand name. Now, that's not an easy exercise because on the one hand side, you want to have it become a name that people can relate to and that really conveys or transports the values. But then you also have to make sure that you can obtain the .com domain for that brand name and that you don't violate any trademarks with other companies. So once we have found that, then we were going into style, stylescapes so that we can start to build a website with our new brand. And then we also came up with the brand logo. Now, in terms of feedback that we got from the partners, we really had feedback around three main buckets. The first bucket was more the feedback where partners said, okay, these are the sort of values or the perception that One Click Factory and QBS is already in the market. So the sort of the positive things around our brand that we already had. And then, of course, there was the um, expertise that we had in both companies and the confidence that partner had in our knowledge. We also got the positive feedback that partners really see us as being the ambassadors for that partner community towards Microsoft. And a very strong feedback that the personal touch and the local contact, especially with the QBS people, really makes a difference. That we are there and we are there locally with our people. And then the technical capabilities of our one-click factory team that really stands out. So these were really the positive things that people already see in our company. But then there are, of course, areas for improvement where partners gave clear feedback that these are the areas that we need to work on. And that is, first and foremost, not to just be a um, commercial organization, but really pay attention to the needs and the desires of the community and build out that community. That we should be agile and act flexible and really be proactive. In other words, not just have that expertise and that knowledge, but to be vocal about it and bring that across to our partners. Not just on the technical side, that was another strong feedback, but also in the areas of sales and marketing. And then the feedback we got from partners around the brand. So in other words, you know, what should partners or would partners like to see with our new brand? And that's on the one hand side that we become a community of experts and that we drive that community, that we are driving simplicity, that it's really easy to do business with us, that the entire organization, so not just our partner success managers or our partner care team, but the entire company is really empowering partners, every part of our partner's organization, and that in the end, we are becoming a true leader and that we are also influencing the strategy of our partners with the insight that we have from all the partners that we are working with and the expertise and also our own vision in terms of how we develop um, our own strategy and how we look at the developments that Microsoft has. So that was sort of the feedback we got from partners. But of course, we also had high expectations from our employees. 
Now, uh, we have done a bunch of videos uh, where our employees from both on Click Factory and QBS Group have articulated their expectations towards the new brand. And we have put together some of these videos. I hope you enjoy it. Let's roll the video. So my expectations from the brand, the brand that, uh, that you present for now, the value that we have, have and shows, and how, shows much how much knowledge, knowledge, knowledge and expertise expert we have. Hello colleagues. Hello colleagues, what do I what expect, do I expect from, the new from the new brand? This new brand. with the new brand. The music must go on. I expect great opportunities, nice collaborations, and most important of all, great services for our partners. Premium quality, like German beer. Hello all, Matthias here from the Nordics, and my expectations towards the new brand is of course, first and foremost, that it will have a great name, great logo, and all that. Uh, but the most important factor is of course, that the great people working there can identify themselves with it. So that was um, expectations uh, from um, our people. And again, also expectations from our partners. Now with that, we are now going to reveal our new brand um, and our new name. And in order to do that, we have uh, prepared um, a small video that we're gonna roll right now. And in this case, I'm also gonna mute myself. So apologies for the echo that was purely due to my mistake. But now let's roll the video and I'm going to keep myself muted. This is the story of two companies. One of them was green. The other, all the colors of Microsoft. The green one was a bit of a nerd, while the other was a hell of a talker. Both wanted to defeat the complexity surrounding dynamics and help partners grow. And so they decided to join forces and travel together. They climbed the stairs for many days, thinking about brand names, domains, mood boards, color schemes. And along the way, they met several colorful characters from both companies who helped them with their thinking until they reached the very summit, ready to beat the complexities only to realize the truth. Their journey was not just about overcoming complexities. It was about finding out who they are as a team. And so, the stairs themselves became a symbol of their friendship. We finally know who they are. They are Companion. So, as of now, we are no longer QBS Group, nor cl uh, One Click Factory, we are Companial. So for that, I think I should change my background right now. So let's hope that this is working out for me. Um, here we go. So here we are with Companial. So I hope that you like um, the name as much as uh, we already do. We have chosen that name because it should convey that hopefully we are a good company for you and that you enjoy the company with us and that we become your companions uh, moving forward. We have also chosen a symbol, which is the stairway that goes up because we want to climb step by step together with you to more success in the dynamics and power platform ecosystem. And we have chosen very fresh colors because we want to convey that we are super optimistic and super positive about the future. And what we're gonna do is for every comment, 
that you leave on our new LinkedIn home for Companio, we will donate a new tree. So look out for Companio on LinkedIn. And for every comment that you leave, we will donate a new tree. Now, with that, I hope you will enjoy Companio. Please take a look at our new website, companio.com. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Ursula. Thanks a lot, Michael, for this great unveiling. Uh, sorry for the delay. I also tried to change my background. I'm not uh, as talented in technical things. Uh, as you can see, I will do it right afterwards. Uh, great reveal uh, of the new brand. Uh, I also hope you like it. Uh, but now the question is, what's in for you as companion partner? I would like to welcome Louis Rüstenhoven, CEO of Companion, to give an outlook on how to conquer the dynamics world in two 2022 with Companion. I hand over to you, Louis. Thank you, Ursula. It's always great to hear the views of Charles, Toby and Mike from Microsoft on what's happening in our Dynamics world. And also an equally amazing experience, Michael, to see the results from your team's enthusiasm and energy in revealing our new brand, Companion. In the next 50 minutes, I will try to answer the question, what's in it for me as a partner or as an ISV of Companion? To answer this question properly, let me begin by explaining the mission and vision of Companion. Our mission is empowering every Dynamics partner to exceed expectations. Our mission tells us who we are now and in the future. You as a partner are in the center of all our efforts. If you are successful, we will be successful. We choose the domain of Microsoft Business Application and focus our energy and efforts on Dynamics and the Power Platform. We are proud to be the only value added indirect provider for partners in the world that focus purely on Dynamics. When we say every Dynamics partner in our mission, we do not just restrict ourselves to the Dynamics partners that are already in our community. We really want to be there for all Dynamics partners, also all other partners from all over the world, regardless of their solution focus, are welcome in our community. With only one addition, if they have a desire to build or evolve a Dynamics practice. We will support a modern workspace partner or an Azure partner if there is a demand for Dynamics expertise and Dynamics services. Our membership programs are 100% focused on new and existing Dynamics and Power Platform partners. And our partners with a membership get access to exclusive privileges. We empower, we want to develop and support all Dynamics partners worldwide and in all aspects of your business. We want to improve your operations, your development, your commercial efforts and your effectiveness in digitizing the business of your customers. We want to enable you and position you as a partner or ISV to be successful. It's our objective to make your lives easier and better. We don't want to tell you what you should do, but we really want to help you to serve your customers in an ever improving way. Empowering is in my view, the closest expression of this type of support. We empower you to exceed expectations. Most important expectation is of course the expectation of your customer, not only through our service offerings and our delivery, for instance, how we support your migrations, but also in sales, marketing, operations and supporting functions. We aim to disburden you and allow you to adapt and innovate for your customers. If we can become a part of how you satisfy your customers, I am convinced that you will return to us using our services and interacting with us more and more. However, exceeding expectation also includes your employees. We provide them with the right tools and top-end expertise. We support them coping with the increasing speed and complexity of innovation 
and turn that into learning opportunities for them. We show leadership around where the Microsoft business applications are heading. And with our strategic partnership with Platan and our Companion Academy, we show our commitment to provide you with the highest quality learnings. Our vision, or easily said, what do we as Companion aspire to? We aspire to be the most preferred community and center of expertise for every dynamics professional in the world. The central word in our vision is the community. We do everything to make the community work and to inspire their members. Our community is every partner and every individual that has a membership and hence has access to all our services. We answer your questions and provide you with an experienced partner success manager. A partner success manager with knowledge and with expertise with whom you can have meaningful business conversations. We have of course our platforms, our portals and our ISV marketplace for your dynamics business. But there is more than just systems and platforms. We want to inform and inspire our companion community around what is happening in the dynamics ecosystem via our webinars, via video broadcasts from Directions or Inspire, and of course, via our newsletters. We foster and promote relationships that are being built between partners, between us and the partner, between the ISV and the partner, between Microsoft and the partner, and even between dynamics professionals. As I said, we want to be there for every dynamics professional, for those in our community, for those outside. No matter where you are in the dynamics ecosystem, you are a professional. A key element of developing ourselves as professional is to exchange ideas, experiences and insights with each other. So part of our work as Companion is to enable connection between the dynamics professionals. We do that through events, both virtually but also in person, as the situation permits. We try to connect in every aspect of our organization. So listening to our mission and vision, I hope that you clearly understand what differentiates us from the competition. In short summary, we are dynamics only and more than just licenses. We are technology experts covering Business Central, Finance and Supply Chain Management, Power Platform, and customer engagement. We support you end to end from getting customers in to delivering successful projects on time and within budget. We serve and manage the Dynamics community and aim to keep your employees current in knowledge and expertise. And last but not least, we are dedicated to your success. And above all, we prioritize the personal relationships between us. What can you, as a partner or as an ISV, expect from us, from Companion? Let me start by referring to what has already been said by our colleagues from Microsoft and Companion. The main theme is about transitioning to digital and to cloud. The speed of transition will pick up. Not only is that our joint future, as Companion, we also want to become part of your transition. The Dynamics business has enormous growth rates of at least 25% per annum for finance and operations, customer engagement and business central. Power Platform has even doubled last few years. The world of SaaS is growing exponentially. The potential is there, but to benefit from these market dynamics, we need to operate and collaborate in the right way. Let me therefore make three promises that you can hold Companion accountable for and that will help you in your transition to digital and to cloud. One, it will be easier to do business with us. Our growth as a company poses an even bigger demand on us to ensure that it is easy for you to do business with us. We want you as a partner or as an ISV to experience that it is simple to do business with us, regardless if it's digitally or to personal contacts and relationships. 
that applies to touch points throughout organization, in sales, in delivery, in customer care, in finance, and in every other part. The dynamics world can be difficult and complex. It's our job to make dynamics simpler and to reduce complexity. We will simplify, we'll make it easy for you. We put ourselves into your shoes and reduce complexity for you. One example is that we will introduce one platform for you as a partner. All your companion services, licenses, trainings and interactions will be in one single place. One platform. It should be easy to obtain our services. We are determined in simplifying our tools, services, portfolio and your interactions with us. But although we digitize many of our touch points and processes, we will never compromise on the personal touch. Our personal touch with our people in partner care, in finance, in sales support, in technical services and of course in sales. One proof point is that we greatly expand our teams in the regions so we can support you as much as possible locally. My second promise, our service portfolio is of high quality. We continue to introduce high quality scalable services and tools. High quality, we can't compromise on that. Otherwise we can't compete. Quality is our North Star and will be a key reason for you to stay in our community. It is foundation for being a center of expertise. We have fantastic services that you might not yet be aware of. For instance, Cloud Partner Panel, Extension Maintenance for Business Central, Solution Maintenance for Finance and Supply Chain Management, ISV Data Migration Tools. These are all solutions that can be applied to optimize your own operations and support. We know that you built your reputation on quality. We will do everything to help you keeping that reputation. Over time, we will also share more and more tools that we use ourselves in projects with you. As an example, we are running a pilot where one partner is using our tools and robots in their upgrade projects. Another example is our cloud partner panel. This tool can be used to provide centralized, automated deployment and management of integrations and solutions for Dynamics 365 and Power Apps. And last but not least, please think about our self-provisioning Azure platform, where you as a partner can manage all your customer modifications, import new objects, add DLL add-ins, or add new users yourself. Finally, with regards to scalable services, think about our online trainings. With the recent addition of Platan to Companion, there's more than enough online learnings available for you. Through our academy, you can keep your employees up to date in terms of knowledge and capabilities. So bringing more tools and new services to you is one of the promises I would love to make. And my third promise is that we will build bridges between services, extend our workloads and make appealing offers to you. We package our services and make combinations that are fit for purpose and ready to use. Our services offering combines the business and technical services, making them more distinctive and of higher value in our combined motion. We want to add value to the CSP transaction and will attach relevant IP, tools and ISV solutions to our CSP and NCE licenses resulting in an offer that really differentiates. Yes, there might be providers that offer cheaper prices, but the same as yourself, we believe that value will drive differentiation and benefit customers. We might have a legacy as business central specialists, but more and more partners are discovering that we also have a lot of expertise in finance and supply chain management, dynamics hosting, customer engagement and power platform. Specifically in these areas, we are extending our technical teams and will introduce new relevant services. 
we are dynamics all up. As you have heard from Charles Lamana, going beyond a single workload and combining solutions through Power Platform, there is a lot to win. It's not just a product that we could sell together, we can really take it as the glue in your Dynamics offerings to customers. I promise you that we will build bridges between services and make our offers appealing. One example was a promotion at the end of 21, where we combined the subscription licenses with Dynamics Azure hosting. And with regards to new offerings, would it be great to access maintenance services for your cloud solutions together with the Microsoft cloud services? Or to get a management platform for all your customer tenants as part of the CSP program? These are examples of what we believe we can bring to market and let you benefit from our investments. So as a summary, in short, my promises. We strive to make it easier to do business with us. We continue to introduce high quality services and tools. And third, we want to surprise you with appealing offerings and services. I realize that simply sharing a mission, vision and making three promises doesn't get the job done. In fact, I think everyone at Companio realize that we need to work hard every day to earn the trust that you place in us. We would like to thank you for all your support over the years and kindly request you to continue to provide us with open and honest feedback. Just like you receive feedback from your customers, we need your feedback to improve our performance every day. My personal motto is that the moment you stop learning, you stop leading. I would like to do this learning together with you and my companion colleagues, with one clear goal in mind, to exceed expectations of both our customers and your employees. Thanks again for your trust, and with that, I would like to return, the, like floor to return to the floor to Ursula. Thank you very much, Louis, for these motivating words. So we are coming uh, to an end. Uh, we heard today about what to expect from business applications in 2022. In the talk show, we heard a lot of good news and some go-tos, how to succeed in 2022 and beyond. I would like to remind you to sign up for the promo offer of the Companion Academy, which is a great opportunity. And we would love to see your comments on our LinkedIn uh, post right after the event. As you heard, it's also for good sake. For each comment, uh, we plant a tree. And last but not least, have a look at our brand new website, companion.com. Again, thanks for your time and listen to our news today. Thanks uh, a lot for the positive comments about our new name, Companion, and our new brand and logo. Right after the event, we have a short survey prepared and would be happy if you could give us your feedback you can also raise your questions there. Of course, we will send out the recording within the next day. Uh, I'm just checking if there are any questions in the Q&A section. We have one question. Um, yeah, the recording will be published. And a question, will Companion serve end customers directly? Maybe I can uh, ask you, Eric, uh, to take on that? Yes, certainly I can answer that. And the question is, sorry, the answer is no. We will not serve in customers. We are only serving partners. Very good. Thanks a lot, Eric. So if there aren't any other questions, uh, as I said, the recording will be sent out uh, within the next days. Uh, have a look at the, at the new website. And with that, the whole team of Companion would like to say thank you for your loyalty. And we are very much looking forward to serving you even better in 2022 and beyond. We wish you a great day and goodbye.